Um, I was given a task today. Um, this MacBook, it's a 2015 uh, MacBook Pro. Well, at least I think it's MacBook Pro, not that it matters too much. <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> this has got a built-in SSD. So, you can't remove the drive and put it into another computer to be able to do things with, uh, because Apple. Uh, they don't make a computer that accepts two drives to, to deal with this. But anyway, um, <clears throat> what happened was, this was running 10.11, uh, El Captain. Uh, this particular unit were, is <clears throat> belongs to a university student. Uh, she was uh, in the middle of doing her uh, studies for an exam, which is due in a couple of days. But anyway, so what's happened is, this has piped up and wanted to do the High Sierra update. And she unfortunately clicked and ran the update before, like, a couple of days before her exams were due, which meant if things go wrong, and this is the, the biggest issue with doing these updates, it's always a risk. Um, anyway, she's gone through and done the update. The update's gone about halfway through and stopped. It actually got physically stuck. Um, it, it, it got stuck at um, half an hour to go uh, for about six hours. Um, at that point, obviously, it's not going anywhere, so she's turned the machine off. Uh, what's happened is, when she's turned the machine back on, the mach it started up with the... I don't know where to start icon, the folder in the middle with the question mark. So it wouldn't start up, couldn't do anything with it. Anyway, what happened was, I tried to boot this up using a 1011 USB stick, because I've got all my OS's on USBs. Um, now, using a 1011 USB, the drive, the SSD that's in the machine showed up, but it showed up empty, as in completely blank. And it had me dumbfounded as to how I'm going to go about getting the data back off this drive, or at least seeing. Because I figured it, it's, it's lost its way. It's, it's forgotten its ability on how to start up. <clears throat> uh, which I've seen happen a lot with uh, the High Sierra update. It, it breaks a lot of computers. And I know why now. Um, <clears throat> what I've ended up doing is... I've got this old um, A1278, no, A1276 MacBook. This is one that's got an easily removable um, hard disk. So what I've done is I've got, the, I've got the hard disk out of it. I've got it connected through a USB device uh, and actually booting this machine off of it. Now, this only had El Captain on it. So booting this off of El Captain, uh, I still couldn't access the drive. I've tr I tried to use the, uh, Paragon's got a, I uh, forget what it's called, it's this here, oh, APFS uh, retrofit kit. I tried using that, and that would have been fine, except the SSD that was in, that's in this laptop was also encrypted. Uh, OSX gives you the option when you set up, um, set up your computer to also encrypt the, uh, the physical storage device at the same time. And in this case, she'd, or either she or the previous owner before her had actually set this up to encrypt the drive, which it did. Um, so what I ended up doing is, unfortunately, I, I left this on here and I actually ran this drive through um, the update through the App Store to go from El Captain to High Sierra. That was fine. Uh, once that went through to High Sierra, I still couldn't access the SSD. Um, I had no option to mount it uh, by putting a password in or whatever. So what I ended up doing then is use, uh, uninstalling this. So it, it's actually no longer installed. It, it just thinks it is. Um, I haven't removed it from the dock yet. Um, so this laptop is still booting off of the hard disk uh, out of this machine, just with the modern OS. As soon as it booted up, post um, removing, uninstalling this, uh, it then gave me the option to uh, type in the unlock password, which is the administrator password for most Mac OS systems, um, which then unlocked the drive and then allowed me to access the data. So 
What I've currently got going on here is, and it's just about finished doing the file copy. It's been going for the better part of an hour and a half, two hours now. Um, so I've got a 2015 MacBook. I've got a 160 gig, not that it matters, but I've got a, I've got a hard disk out of this device booting through USB. So the whole computer at the moment, it, the whole OS is living off of this drive. Um, I've also now got this external drive, which is formatted as an XFAT. Um, it had a few issues. I had to go use a Windows PC to blank the drive completely, uh, then format it as an XFAT. Then when I plugged it into here, I can actually deal with it. Um, and then it's all good and well. Um, and then... Once all this is finished, I've then got to use, I've got to use the uh, the High Sierra install data, which is left behind on the internal drive. I've got to make a USB stick for 1013, which I've got the stick ready to go. Uh, and once that's done, boot off of that, blank the internal SSD, uh, install 1013 from scratch and then copy the data back from the external to the internal. Um, now, what actually causes the problem? And I did, uh, I alluded to it previously uh, in the video here. Um, <clears throat> during the update to 10.13, 10.13 changes the file system from HFS, which is the file system that OSX has been using for quite a few versions now. It changes it from that to this other one called and it says it down here, APFS, uh, which is a completely different method of doing things. It's more uh, catered towards uh, SSDs, so it's designed to deal with that. The problem is there's no way of, there's no official Apple method that I know of yet to be able to access APFS hard disks, internal or otherwise, uh, from an OS that's uh, an earlier version. So if you've got even uh, uh, Sierra, which is 10.12, or uh, El Captain 10.11, uh, there's no official Apple version or method of being able to access uh, APFS drives on it. And I guess they do this on purpose to do the updates and things, but pretty much it's the same con concept as if you were going for an upgrade, actually not, yeah, going from an upgrade from, say, Windows uh, 98 to Windows XP, where once you're in XP, uh, yeah, Windows 98, because you'd be running on FAT32, um, if you were to upgrade to Windows XP, um, it operates un uh, natively under NTFS, and there is an option in there to do a convert the file system so you can convert from uh, FAT32 to NTFS or whatever. Uh, <clears throat> and same deal, you, there's no native way really uh, to access an NTFS partition from a FAT32 operating system. Uh, and I think that's the same deal. I mean, you wouldn't think there's a big difference between 10.12 and 10.13, but that big update, or that changeover to APFS, I think is one of the biggest causes of failures for uh, High Sierra to uh, update, which seems to be very, very common based on what I'm seeing on the internet. What's seen, the biggest thing that I'm seeing coming out of this is most of the updates that fail, um, fail to a point where you no longer have access to your data. And not that I know what's causing it, it just seems to happen that way. But <clears throat> what I figured was, when I, I, I found a tool, um, it's in the downloads on here actually. I've got a few downloads on here, but... Um, What's it called? Let me go into here. I downloaded the utility. Um, oh, it's probably not in here because I got it through the App Store. Um, just give me two seconds. <clears throat> yeah, what I ended up doing, I, I went into the App Store. I uh, did a quick search for something that could access or recover data from an APFS uh, partition. And I found this software called iBoySoft. Now, what it managed to do when I was running through it is it could see the 
uh, when it, it actually asked to for the code to unlock the drive, which I figured at that point, yeah, the drive must have been encrypted. Uh, when it was running through, it actually showed up a list of uh, all the folders uh, properly with, um, you know, applications, system users, whatever. And I had a quick run through it. Let it do a quick scan. And real, uh, when it got to sort of enough that I could see, I stopped it and hit preview, and I could actually see some of the files on the drive. So I figured the drive's not physically corrupt. It's just it, the OS X or the system didn't know or didn't know it had to unlock the drive to be able to boot. So there's a there's obviously a flag that hadn't been set during the OS install that says um, when you restart, you're going to have to unlock this drive before you can boot. So somewhere between the drive, the either, I don't know what they could, don't call it the BIOS on Max, but I guess the BIOS boot sequence didn't have in it the code needed to unlock the drive, so that part mustn't have been finished yet, or that might have been where it got stuck when it was doing the update. But yeah, so there's there is a lot of issues with the 1013 update, but if you have the ability. Uh, if you if you've got a modern system with an SSD in it and it won't boot because of um, after doing the update or during doing the update, um, what you need to do is get a an external drive. It doesn't matter what it is. You can blank the shit out of it. It, it can be anything. Um, this is just an Apple one because it's out of an Apple, um, but it doesn't have to be. All you need is a USB drive. It can even be one of these. Um, if you've got a the you got the internet recovery on your laptop. <clears throat> Uh, boot the internet recovery, which is command option, uh, is it command option and R? Um, which will let you do the internet recovery, run the internet recovery, get it to install a new version of the OS. It doesn't matter what version, if even if the built-in recovery puts you on 10.11 or something, or 10.9, I think this one would probably do. Um, put that onto your external hard disk. Tell it to use that as the drive. Put it on there. Once it boots up off the external hard drive, um, <clears throat> go into the App Store, sign in with your Apple account, um, and then tell it to download the High Sierra update onto the clean install that's on here. Run it, let it do it. When the computer restarts uh, on the new install, it will then pipe up the message with the password to unlock the encrypted drive that's internal. Once you type your password in, which is the same password that you would use when you were to either log in or to install an application, uh, and at that point you'll get the folder listing on the drive, you can copy all your data off and she's all good. You don't have to pay for expensive software. All you need to do is get the system to boot off another drive and you'll be fine. This is probably the biggest reason I like the Macs, uh, and I'm predem uh, predominantly a PC person, but this whole booting off an external drive when the internal drive is up the shit, um, I think is brilliant because this, this, oh, not that one, sorry, this one <clears throat> had the OS and everything set up for it on a, um, a MacBook, which is nearly, well, what, probably nine years old, um, and it booted on this thing without any questions whatsoever. It just went straight in. So obviously they keep a, a driver base in the install of the OS all the time, uh, even for modern systems. It just seemed to work. So yeah, that's that's pretty much trick. Boot off boot off a US uh, a USB hard disk, uh, any hard disk as long as it's got the OS on it. Or if it doesn't, blank it and then install the OS using the ability that is built into the Mac that you're trying to fix. Uh, once you boot it onto that one. You can then access the drive internally, and off you go. So that's pretty much the trick to it. Lots of fun. Um, it took me took me a little bit to deal with it. Probably two hours to get this thing to boot to a point where I could actually access the internal drive. That's because looking on the internet, there's no instructions on this shit. So anyway, that's how I did it. See ya.